Thank you so much for joining us. We know this word will significantly impact your life. So let's tune in. Thank you guys. Thank you for every one of you being here today. And, and today we're going we're gonna to be really talking about really all year long. We're going to be talking about growing. That this is going to be a year of growth. Is there anybody that wants to grow? I want to grow. That means... The opposite is not growing or being hindered or staying the same. I don't want to stay the same. I want to grow. And one of the areas that's going to be really, really, really important for us to grow in is our knowledge of the Word of, of God. Growing in the Word. Say it with me. Growing in the Word. When I was 17 years old, I, was, I grew up in the church, but when I was 17 years old, I just... I made up my mind that I wanted more. I wanted to get to know God more. And, and I just felt the Holy Spirit quickly tell me, well, then if you want to know me better, you got to know my word better. And that's not going to happen by just showing up to church. How that's going to happen is that you're going to have to invest study time. You're going to have to be intentionally about, intentional about studying the word of God. So that year in my backpack, for the first time in my life, I put a Bible in my backpack. And every opportunity I had at lunchtime, instead of hanging out with my friends, that year, it was my senior year at Fontana High School. That year, every time I got a little break, I'd open up that Bible. If I was in a DMV line, I would open up the Bible. If I was eating lunch, I'd open up the Bible. If I was eating dinner, I'd open up the Bible. And the goal that year was to cover every single scripture in the Bible that year, that that year I'd read through the whole Bible. That year became the foundation of my whole life. I didn't realize how much I grew that year until I started facing life as I go, started becoming a young adult and going into the, the, the workforce. And as I was talking to grown adults that were, you know, 20 years older than me, sometimes 30 years older than me. What ended up happening, many of them, as they found out that I knew the word of God and I had wisdom beyond my years, would begin to ask me for counsel. I remember there'd be millionaires that, that had, knew how to make money, but they didn't know how to run their lives. They knew how to make money, but they were, their families were dis being destroyed. And then they would ask me, what do you, can you pray for me? What advice would you give me? I don't know what to do. And they really believed that I had the answers because I did have the answers. And I got those answers not because I had a college education. I got those answers because I had a biblical education. If you and I would get to know the word of God, it's going to make you wiser. It's going to make you effective. And it's going to save you a lot of pain. Most of the pain that's inflicted on us is self-inflicted. Self-inflicted by the bad choices that we're making. I'm going to give you some quotes of some famous people. This is President Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th president. He said, a thorough understanding of the Bible is better than a college education. Woodrow Wilson, 28th president of the United States, also served as a president of Princeton University. This is what he said. I am sorry for men who do not read the Bible every day. I wonder why they deprive themselves of the strength and pleasure. Daniel Webster he said this, education is useless without the Bible. I remember talking to a multimillionaire on a vacation. And when I go on vacation, I go fully loaded with the word of God and waiting. I, it, I'm not on vacation for telling people about Jesus. So when I go on vacation, I'm still looking for opportunities to share my faith. Why melt up? I met a multimillionaire. And he wasn't just a multimillionaire. He was a show-off multimillionaire. What I mean by that is he was telling me about the car dealerships he owns and the businesses he owned and the education he had. Like, and he really wanted to impress me. I don't know why. But after I, he was done speaking, I go, you're really educated. It looks like you're successful. 
But I ask him this, have you ever read the best-selling book in the world? He goes, what book is that? I go, it's the Bible. If you've not read the best-selling book in the world, you're not fully educated. Wouldn't you agree? And you know what he said? You're right. I'm not. I go, will you promise me this? Will you start, open up the Bible and begin to read it? It's the best-selling book in the world. Year after year, he goes, I promise you, I will do it. Now, we have this opportunity to gain wisdom. We have this opportunity to enter in a relationship with God because to know the Word is to know God. To not know the Word is not to know God. So what is the Word? Say it with me, what is the Word? The Word of God is the voice of God speaking to us. You can write that down. It's the voice of God speaking to us. I hear people once in a while, they'll say, I ne like, I don't hear God. You hear God. I don't hear God. Well, all you need to do is open up the Bible and you'll hear God. The Word of God comes from the mouth of God. In Job 23, 12, it says this, I always obey His commands. I love this statement. Job made this statement, and Job was a very rich man, um, and the Scripture says he was a righteous man. And he makes a declaration, I always obey His commands. What he was saying is, the Word of God, I study the Word, and I, and I hear the Word, I read the Word, but more than that, I obey the Word. Obeying the Word is my lifestyle. If you wanted to inter interview Job, because he would have been the one living the life of the rich and famous. He would have been one of those guys that you would want to look at his crib, look at his ranch, look at his riches. And, say, and then you would ask him, how did you do it? And he probably would have answered that with this scripture. I always obey his commands. I love the words from his mouth. Where does the word of God come from? Directly from God's mouth. More than I love my food. I love his statement. He goes, I always obey the word of God or the commands of God. And he goes on to say, I love the word of God more than I love tacos. More than I love pizza. More than I love Chinese food. More than I love a nice steak. I mean, we just finished the fast. We could talk about this stuff. I love God's word more than I love a lobster. I love God's word more than I love food. Wow. No wonder he was so successful. He has a whole book in the Bible named after him. But you know what's so great about this word? This word still works because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What a shame to live a life where you only hear the word and you never participate. What I mean by that is when you begin to obey the word, you unlock the power of the word, the resources of the word, the healing of the word, the, the breakthroughs of the word. It's only available to those that know it and do it. Don't get jealous. Just start obeying. But it's really, really important that we get this point that the word of God comes from God's mouth. All scripture is given to us by God himself. It doesn't come from man. The source of the written word is God. God said it and man wrote it. In 2 Timothy 3.16, it says, all scripture is given 
by God. Say it with me. All scripture is given by God. That word given, it's a Greek word. It means divinely breathed. It means it came out of his mouth. Given by inspiration of God. Or it means directly from his mouth. Breathed out of his mouth. We must get this. Because there's a war on the, I want you to get this, on the authenticity, the integrity of the word of God. What the devil wants you to believe is that the word of God has errors or mistakes in it. Why is that a problem? Because if you believe that the word of God came from men, you won't trust the word to direct your life. And there's going to be a problem. When you hear a word that you don't agree with, you're just going to say, maybe that's the part that wasn't from God. See, either we believe, and I want you to get this, the word comes from God, or we believe that the word comes from man. And if the word comes from men, then it has error and mistakes, and it cannot be trusted. But if it comes from God, the word of God then is perfect and it could be relied on 100%. This is real. When you're hearing the word, you're hearing from God. The word of God, check this next point about, we're not, it's the next point, it's right, it's right here tied into this major point. The, it, the word of God is the voice of God speaking to us. The word of God is perfect. The word of God is what? It is perfect because it comes from God and not man. A perfect God has given us a perfect word. Since the word of God is perfect, it can be a hundred, it is a hundred percent reliable. You know, I, I talk to people all the time and, and, and then they actually get like these ideas from the devil. How do I know they get ideas from the devil? Because if I've heard it from one, I've heard it from a hundred of them. And, and, they, and they, they didn't talk with each other, but someone's spreading these lies. And then they'll say, you know, oh, I've heard this a lot of time. You know, the Bible has contradictions. And then I say, okay, can you name one? And then they go, well, uh, 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 well, I can't name one, but I heard. Exactly. I go, you know why you're saying that statement, sir? You're saying that statement because you don't want to be accountable to the word of God. But one day you'll be judged by the word of God. The word of God is going nowhere. And one day you'll stand before God and you'll be judged by the word that you're thinking has error and it has no error. I want you to get this, the Bible. The Bible has been the most scrutinized book in the world. There's been geniuses that have done everything they could to discredit it. And after all of the, this trying to discredit the word of God, the word of God still remains 100% true and they found zero, zero error in the word of God. God's word is perfect. Anything, this is what it means. Anything that the devil, I mean, no, let's put this. Anything, let's put God in it. Anything that God tells you to do works 100% of the time in any hood, in any family, in any nation. Because God's word is perfect. You, gotta, you really got to get this in your spirit. Is it perfect? Perfect means without blemish, entirely without any flaws, without defects or shortcomings. It's exact. It's correct in every detail. It's pure. It's unmixed. It's completely true. It's truth. It's indisputable. It's incontestable. I love all those words. Make me feel smart. Indisputable. What does the word of God tell us to do? I'm going to give you one of the commands. He says this, 
forgive those that trespass against you and God will forgive you. That's, that's a command, just forgive. Do you know that right now someone's going to, they're going to school to get a master's degree in psychology and counseling. And this is what they're going to tell you in counseling. I know what your problem is. You need to forgive. That's all they're going to tell you. All they're going to do is this. They're going to go back. Let's go back to your little kid. Who hurts you? Who are you angry at? Who haven't you forgiven? Who are you hating? That's what's causing all these problems that you have today. And I could have told you when you were six years old, when you came to Sunday school, forgive those that trespass against you and God will forgive you. It's the word of God. Everything that the word of God tells us is perfect and it works. That's why I, I said, I fear the word of God in a healthy way. What do you mean by that is, I fear doing something that's opposite to, to the word. That means I fear disobeying the word. I'll tell you why I fear it. Because I know if I do it contrary to the word, it's not going to work. Do you know why we disobey? Because I think we think I could do it my way and it's still going to work. And that's why the jails are full. going to get away this time, right? That's why our relationships aren't working. We're doing it our way. Let oh, me get that. That's why we're so addicted. We're doing it our way. That's why we're so angry. We're doing it our way. That's why we're so depressed. We're doing it our way. The Word of God will bring you joy. Doing it the other way will lead you to depression. The Word of God is perfect. Look at Psalms 19.7. The instruction of the Lord is perfect. The instruction of the Lord is perfect. Renewing one's life. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy. Making the inexperienced wise. The word of God is perfect. Now, it's perfect. And this is what it does for those that hear it, believe it, and receive it. Hear it. Believe it and for those that hear the word, believe the word and receive it, this is the results every single time. Renewed lives, transformed lives, restored lives, lives that recover, lives that get delivered and set free. Lives that are saved by faith in Jesus Christ, which is the Word of God. The instruction of the Lord is perfect. Renewing one's what? It renews one's what? Life. This is what the Word of God does. This Word is so powerful. That's why I could take it everywhere. And the end result of me and you speaking the Word of God is transformed lives. Are you here and you need change? Is there an area in your life they say, man, I need a new start. I need recovery right now. I need to be refreshed. I need to be repaired. I need to be delivered. I need to turn back to God. I got an answer for you. This is what you need. You need the Word of God because the Word of God will get you back on track if you just believe it, receive it. That's all we got to do. Hear it, believe it, receive it. Now there is, an, uh, there is resistance. Not now, maybe tomorrow. I just want to do one more run in the neighborhood one more time. Just one more. Not today. Pastor, what you're saying sounds good. Because I do need renewal. I feel wore out. I need to be refreshed. 
I need to recover. And the word of God is perfect. It works every time for anyone that believes it. If you believe it, you get the same results as your neighbor that right now is walking in joy, your neighbor that's walking in prosperity, your neighbor that's happy, your neighbor that has some peace. It could work for you too. Stop fighting the word of God and start fighting the imaginations and impressions of the devil. Because either you're living by the word or you're living by the God's word or you're living by the suggestions of the devil. How many know the devil speaks too? Have you ever heard the devil speak to you? Come on, raise your hands if you have. The other one's like, no. He's speaking to you right now. I'm saying, sure. <laughs> right? He, we've heard him suggest things that are like wrong. Like, where would that thought come from? Aren't you glad that your thoughts aren't put on like video every week? Because you look good right now, but some of you guys have some crazy thoughts this week. And then you know what you could say if those thoughts didn't come up and we did that? You said, that wasn't me, that was the devil. That was his suggestion, not me. I had thought about it for a few minutes, but I knew that was the devil. Right? God is good, but he renews. Now, when we hear the word of God and read the word of God, we should accept it as God speaking to us. Because the word of God is the voice of God speaking to us. When we're hearing the word of God, we should receive it like God is speaking to us. And that's why I get so excited to come to church. Because I want to hear from God. I'm not, we're not here to, to hear from a man, a woman, a person. We are here to hear from God. This year, we're going to grow in our knowledge of God's word. We're going to grow in the word. And when you grow in the Word, this is what's going to happen. You're going to start experiencing refreshing, renewal, recovery. This is also going to begin to happen. You're going to start getting smarter. And you say, well, what do you mean? Well, my IQ is going to increase? It probably will. But I'm not just talking about your IQ. I'm talking about making right decisions finally. Because you're not going to be led by your emotions. You're not going to be led by a drug. You're not going to be led by your anger. You're not going to be led by your depression. You're going to be led by the word. It makes the inexperience experienced. Because you know what you're doing? You're relying on his experience instead of your limited experience. Well, pastor, I could give you an example. I'm 50-something years old. I don't even know how much over 50 I am, but I'm 50-something. And I can say, man, Marco, you have a lot of experience, 50-some years of experience. And God says, but I have experience before the foundations of the earth. I created you. I've seen all things. And not only do I have experience, I know all things. Why don't you begin to depend on my experience, my knowledge, my insight, so you can start getting my results. Wow. Wow. Oh, this should get you excited. This would unlock your life. Come on, this would unlock your life. I believe there's warfare on this because if you get to know the Word of God, it's all over. Because see, when your mind is covered with the Word of God, the devil now has no access. Some of us have too much empty space in your head the Bible says that the devil comes and he finds the house empty. He found, finds the head empty. He just comes in and takes over because there's no resistance. The resistance that you need to have in your mind is God's thoughts. And you cannot get God's thoughts in your mind accidentally. You're going to have to get into the Word and make it part of your daily disciplines and begin to meditate on the Word. Turn off the YouTube, turn off the Instagram, and get into some Word because the Word of God is perfect and it will change your life. 
I want God's results. I know that I not only want God's results, I want God's emotions. I want to start thinking like God and feeling like God. You know God's not depressed and worried and stressed out like us. He's just, he's, he, he has peace. That's why it's called, I give you peace that the world can't give you. Look at this, look at this verse. 1 Thessalonians 2.13. This is why we constantly thank God. There's a, there's a preacher saying this. This is why we constantly thank God. Because when you receive the word of God that you heard from us, you welcomed it, not as a human message. We're super excited because the word of God is the voice of God speaking to us. And we're so excited because when we spoke the word of God, you received it and you welcomed it, but not as a human message, but as it truly is the word of God, which also works effectively in you who believe. There's a lot of good stuff there. He goes, the word of God was spoken. And what, what I'm, we're, we're so excited about that you look past, my, you look past the humanity and you said, right now, I am hearing from God. So you didn't, you didn't receive the word that you were hearing from a human. You actually believed that you were hearing the words of God. And think, what if tonight an angel came into your room in full splendor, just full of glory, lights up your dark room, and he says, I'm an angel from the Lord of heaven's army. And I declare from the throne of heaven that today your life will never be the same. From this day forward, you will prosper and be in health and be wise. You'll be healed of all your diseases. And if you call upon the name any time of, of the Lord, he will answer quickly and every prayer that you make in his name, he will grant. Thus saith the Lord. What if that happened to you tonight? Would you begin to tell somebody, oh my God, I got a visitation from God. It was an angel from heaven. Why is that important? because I'm an angel today. I'm that angel. I'm not saying I'm somebody special, but the angel, all he is is a messenger. I'm giving you a message that God's word is perfect and it's reliable. And if you begin to believe the promises of God, it will work effectively and powerfully for you. Look what the scripture says. But it is, but as it is truly is, the Word of God, which also works effectively in you who believe. So that means if God's not doing some really powerful things in your life right now, the problem is not the Word. The problem is that we don't believe. You've been watching too much YouTube video. And these videos, some of them are sent by Satan to get you to question your faith. They're arguments to convince you that the Word of God has error and it cannot be trusted. And as long as you believe that, that's what prompts. This is the problem. You're not a believer. And get this. Either you believe that the Word of God is 100% perfect, or you don't. If you believe that the Word of God is 100% perfect, the Word of God is 100% reliable. If you don't believe that the Word of God is 100% perfect, 
The word of God is 100% unreliable. It's just one or the other. I've been studying this Bible for years and I've had every single person that tried to argue and tell me their stories and, and every single one of them after their initial statements had nothing left. Because once you get to know the word of God, you experience God. You know God because the word of God is God. And we'll cover that next week. The word of God, what? Is God. So when I get to know the word of God, I can't be talked out of some, see, I can be talked out of something I experienced with my head, but I can't be talked out of something I've experienced with my life. What I mean by that is when I hear the word of God and I believe the word of God and I receive the word of God, I experience God. You can't separate his word from his power. That's why when you receive the word, you receive the power. My life's been transformed by the power of God. I've been delivered. I've been set free. I am no longer the person I used to be. And it all happened with me just sitting down and hearing a word, believing it, receiving it, and it set me free and made me new. Wow. One word. And you know what's so awesome? We got a whole Bible of God's promises, God's letters, God's power. And God says, church, I want you to get to know me because I'm the answer. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And anyone here that would just believe in me, they will be saved, they will have eternal life, they'll be delivered, they'll be made whole. I want to do it for you and your family. I have the power of the Holy Spirit and it's all wrapped up in my word. Wow. This is what I'm asking you to do. The Word of God is the voice of God speaking to us. Spend a little time studying the Word on a daily basis. Take a little pen and paper and begin to hear God. And this is what you're going to experience. You're going to start experiencing renewal of life. Come every time we open these doors, hear the Word of God. Come on Sunday mornings, join our are starting at the way classes. I'll leave it, I'm going to leave you with one last quote and have Christian come up and close this out. One of the greatest needs in the church today, this is a quote from Billy Graham, is to come, is to come back to the scriptures as the basis of authority and to study them prayfully with dependence on the Holy Spirit for interpretation. Let the words of God burn in our souls. It is when we fill our hearts with His Word that we overflow into the lives of others. And that was Billy Graham on November 8th, 1959. Are we ready for God's Word to overflow in our hearts? Christian, can you please close us out? Love you guys. If this message has been a blessing in your life and you would like to show support, please comment, like, share, and subscribe, or click the link below so that you can contribute to our ministry. Thank you and God bless.